lately I've been talking with some friends about trying to take this whole music thing a bit more seriously again. Now, don't get me wrong, writing demos and background music for YouTube videos has been a ton of fun, but honestly, what I've been missing is playing in a band, writing songs, and playing shows. So I've been hard at work writing, recording demos, reaching out to friends and old band members, And as I've been writing and practicing, I realized there's a key component to my live rig that I'm sorely missing, an overdrive pedal. The one that I used to use was on loan for my old guitarist, so that spot on my board has been empty for a bit too long. And sure, it would probably be a lot more on brand for me to just build the pedal I need, but Seattle has so many amazing music shops that I'm positive one of them will have exactly what I'm looking for. So today, I thought I'd take you all through three of my favorite music shops around town as we hunt for my perfect pedal. everyone, Nisa Bell here. Now, in my experience, it can be really easy to get distracted and lose sight of what you're looking for, especially when gear is involved. So I set some rules for myself to keep me focused on the task at hand. Number one, I will only be looking at used gear, no new pedals allowed. Number two, we need to stay under $200 max because I still need to pay rent next month. And number three, it needs to be simple. Like, stupid simple. In a live setting, I don't need 10 different overdrive circuits or a ton of different gain settings. Just something that reliably sounds good that I can dial in, kick on, and forget about. So with that criteria in mind, let's go pedal hunting. Now, before we could start our search in earnest, the first thing I need to do is meet up with my good friend Seb, who's gonna be helping us out with filming today. What up? Did you get your ears fixed? No. <laughs> and once we had our two-person team assembled, we headed out to our first location, Capital Loans. Capital Loans is a little pawn shop located in the Capitol Hill district of Seattle. And despite their size, they always have a huge selection of guitars, amps, keys, and of course, guitar pedals. So I tried out a few different pedals from the Cattle and Bread Dirty Little Secret to the DoD 250. Lucky for me, they even had my amp in stock so I could get a good idea of how these pedals would sound on my rig. But out of all the pedals I tried, the standout one honestly surprised me. The Fender MTG LA had a nice tight low end that gave Ariel this really authoritative articulation on leads, but also enough clarity that I could still hear every chord tone in my rhythm parts. But the real question is, how does the Fender Magic the Gathering Los Angeles Edition score with our search criteria? Is it used? Absolutely. Is it under budget? At around $160, I think that's a fair price. And is it simple? Kinda? This pedal features a three-band EQ, which is great for dialing in that perfect sound, but is also something I could easily mess up mid-set with a poorly placed step. Also, this pedal had a built-in boost that I honestly could not hear the effect of unless I dimed both controls. Overall, I'd give this one a definite maybe, and I'd be more than happy to add this pedal to my rig if it came down to it. So I asked the staff at Capital Loans to hold this one behind the counter for me, and we headed off to our second location. Well, with a couple detours. All right, so we just finished up at the first place, so now I think we're gonna go get some lunch. guitar pedals, one sunglasses. And with our food and fashion needs satiated, we finally arrived at our second stop, Dusty Strings. Dusty Strings is a surprisingly large shop tucked below ground level in the Fremont area. They specialize in acoustic instruments like guitars, mandolins, ukuleles, and are even one of the most prominent builders and distributors of harps. They also have to be what I consider the best door in all of Seattle. Now, some of you may be wondering, why am I looking for an overdrive pedal at an acoustic shop? Well, despite the reputation, Dusty Strings also has quite the selection of electric guitars, amps, and pedals. So after taking a look at their used inventory, I narrowed it down to three options. The Fox Pedals Kingdom V2, 
the Keeley El Rey Dorado, and the Jam Petals Double Dreamer. These were definitely three of the most unique petals I've ever tried. The Kingdom had this sort of granular roar to it, and the Keeley had this awesome aggressive bite that came through even with the gain dialed back. Both were super cool sounds, but not really what I was looking for. The real standout for me was the Double Dreamer. This is one of those pedals with two different overdrive circuits built in that you can switch between or stack. Both circuits individually sounded great and they stacked perfectly in either order. So let's check back in with our rubric. Used, check. Under $200, not quite. It's $225. The other one was 150. Yeah. Definitely a bit out of my budget. And finally, is it simple? And that's a hard no. This is two pedals in one with separate controls as well as a high gain foot switch that can be routed to either or both circuits. Especially for my purposes. And I had this, this issue with the Fender too where it's like, it has that built in boost, but I don't really need that. So, I don't know. Let's... So with that, I gave the Double Dreamer a score of, this is probably more than I need, and we got on the bus to our third and final location, The Trading Musician. The Trading Musician is located in the Ravenna neighborhood and is one of the most iconic Seattle music stores. They have a huge selection of gear ranging from amps to harmonicas, and of course, a fully stocked pedal library. So after perusing their massive overdrive distortion fuzz section, I found myself with two great options. Plus, one more that I just had to try. So the first of my non-pizza-shaped options was the Mojo Hand FX Magpie, which is a classic British-style overdrive. And the second is the award-winning JHS Morning Glory. Not gonna lie, it was really close between these two pedals. Both are giving me exactly what I wanted sonically. Both had controls that were low profile with only a couple features I didn't need. And both were coming in at under $200. I don't know. I think if I had to pick out of these two, I'm going to HS, but we have not considered pizza. I don't need another fuzz. I have a fuzz that I love. I have a fuzz that I built. But, pizza. but come on, but pizza. pizza. But even with our pizza-shaped friend sounding that good out of nowhere, the JHS ended up winning out. So even if a few features on this pedal, like the gain toggle and the bright cut switch would go unused in my rig, at $160, I'd rather have features that I like and don't use versus ones that I don't. So let's see how the JHS Morning Glory stacks up. Used, check. Under $200, check. Simple, close enough. Earning this pedal a score of, yeah, I get the hype, and beating out the current front runner, the Fender MTG LA. And with that, I packed up Ariel one last time, purchased my first ever JHS pedal, and our search was finally over. Or so I thought, because as I was chatting with the staff on our way out, one of them asked, did you try the Nobels? Now, at the time, I had never heard of the Nobel's ODR-1. I didn't know its history, nor about the Nashville session players that swear by them. All I saw was a pretty underwhelming Nickelodeon slime green pedal that honestly looks a bit like a cheap boss knockoff. And at this point in our search, I was a bit peddled out and ready to go home. But after enough poking and prodding from Seb and the staff, I relented and put it up against my newly purchased Morning Glory. And it was close, like really close. <laughs> I do like the Nobles a lot. 
specifically with the chimey jag, specifically with this. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's not like my rig's gonna change anytime soon, but I'm just wondering if I need that flexibility or not. Sure, the JHS had a bit more flexibility with its high and low gain modes, but once I got them both dialed in, both were giving me exactly what I was looking for. Now, where the two pedals differed was in their low mid presence. To my ears, the Nobels came off much darker than the JHS. I know that this can be a bit of a problem for a lot of players, especially if they're looking for clarity at higher gain settings. But here's the thing. My whole rig is super bright. Bright pickups, bright pots, octave up effects. If I'm not careful, some of the sounds that come out of my amp will make your ears bleed. And with that in mind, the Nobels honestly seem like the perfect pedal to tame some of that runaway high end and to give me the grit that I'm looking for. So how does the Nobel score? Is it used? Check. Is it under $200? F that, this thing is under $100. Is it simple? It's stupid simple. Besides the three knobs on the top, there's a low cut switch, but it's hidden in the battery compartment as if it already knows that I won't be touching it. So with that, the Nobel's ODR-1 earns a score of everything I'm looking for, nothing more, nothing less. I think that's the one. Now, after three shops, 11 pedals, and one pair of sunglasses, am I saying that the Nobel's ODR-1 is the perfect overdrive pedal? Probably not. As you can imagine, there's no perfect pedal. The ODR-1 is dark, it has limited tonal sculpting options, and it doesn't have the flexibility of something like the Morning Glory or the MTG LA. But if you're someone who plays a bright guitar, you're horrifically uncoordinated with your feet, and you're on a bit of a budget, then the ODR-1 may in fact be the perfect pedal for you. But enough talking about it, let's see what this thing can do. My live rig is one step closer to complete. I can't wait to get back to writing with the help of our little green friend. A huge thank you to Capital Loans, Dusty Strings, and Trading Musician for letting us film and for just being so kind and helpful in our gear hunt. I've left links to all three shops in the description below, so check them out online or in person if you live in the area. And of course, a huge shout out to Seb who had to put up with me playing the same riffs over and over and over. I couldn't have done any of this video without you and I definitely owe you a beer the next time we hang out. Be sure to check out his channel right here. But now I want to hear from all of you. Do you have a perfect pedal you're searching for? Let me know down below. But I think that's all I have for you today, so thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Happy playing!